Welcome back to the Dividend Diplomats YouTube channel, everyone. You know us by now. We're your boys, the Dividend Diplomats, and today, everyone, I'll talk to you about a move we made in my wife's portfolio. This move sold one ETF, bought another, and guess what? We added over $75 of dividend income, making this one simple transaction. Man, Bert, can't wait to dive in, guys, but make sure you subscribe to the channel below. Takes two seconds. Give yeah, this video yeah. a nice thumbs Down up. There. Let's make some noise, guys. We're trying to have some fun here, but we're also trying to hit milestones. We set goals, trying to get to 20,000 subscribers right now. So, Bert, what yeah. happened? Talk us through. What did you do during the week here on April 3rd? Can't wait to hear about this. So, as you guys know, um, we're doing some cleanup in my wife's portfolio. She's had a lot of lingering positions. Some were small, some were large. We folded up two of them, moved them into AMT, and we're getting ready to do a third one and put that one into AMT, except for the fact that AMT's price just popped. So I kind of missed the shot there. So I might just be waiting patiently. That's a story for a different day. I know jinkies. So this one, as I was going through her portfolio, we were doing our March 31st end of quarter statement. There was something else that just kind of finally snapped in me, and I don't know why. It just now hit me. Back in 2019, we bought for my wife about um, 40 shares, which has grown to about $3,600 of uh, a fund in iShares Core S&P 500 total U.S. stock market ETF, ticker symbol ITOT. It's just kind of been sitting there. We haven't really done much with it. Just been collecting dividend checks, appreciating. Um, it's grown. As you can imagine, the S&P 500 was here. Now it was here after from 2019 through 2023. So again, sitting on $3,600 of this S&P 500 fund. That said, though, there was another part of this conversation that got me thinking here, Lainey. I talked about a few weeks ago. I'm going to start adding two shares of another ETF to my wife's portfolio every single week everybody's favorite Schwab high dividend yield fund, SCHD. So we're starting to grow that position. And it was really funny when I was just staring at the portfolio. It just kind of hit me. Like, why do I need ITOT in my portfolio? That was just a question that I just kept asking myself over and over and over again. And Brett, for, do you remember how you even ended up with ITOT at all? I have no clue. Like, I don't know what my thought process was. I don't know how this got acquired in there, why we picked ITOT instead of VOO at the time. I honestly, like, I look back at it and it's nothing, but you look at their holdings, it's Apple, it's Microsoft, it's everything that you would expect out of an S&P 500 fund. So it did its job. It followed the S&P 500 over the years. We got some growth. The yield on this fund was about 1.58%. So the yield mirrored the S&P 500. Again, it was just your standard run-of-the-mill ex low expense ratio um, fund that mirrored the S&P 500. ITOT. So you've had it now for oh, four years. What type of an yeah. account was this one sitting in again? Yeah, this was in my wife's traditional brokerage account. So that's where we're starting to build it. Taxable. This. Yeah, taxable. So it was just sitting there. And that's where we're building this SCHD position. So that's where it was all in my head. It just clicked. It could be a very easy transaction to move it from one fund to the other. And some of the other things that I was thinking about as we're going through this is obviously it's nice to have index funds and have diversification and have exposures. We're going through it. Me selling ITOT isn't going to reduce our overall stock market exposure. We have VOO, we have VIIX or VIIIX, just a lot of them going over there. Um, kidding, uh, VINIX. So we have plenty of other S&P 500 funds and other accounts. This one was just kind of sitting out there on the traditional brokerage. So that's where it just popped in my mind. Why not just move it from ITOT to SCHD and just really beef up that SCHD position right out of the gate? Yeah, so the, the question was, was, yeah, like, why do you hold it? Why not build out this SCHD ETF, you know, which mm -hmm. I know the dividend investing community will argue it is the best dividend ETF with SCHD. And you guys just started building up the position too. Yeah, we had four shares of SCHD at the time we did this. So it was a very new position. So that's where I'm kind of excited just to be able to just give like a heavy, just a, just a big drop in and just a splash right out of the gate to make this a very large ETF. So um, so you weren't adding to this, it was just there. You there, had yeah. a ton of exposure to the S&P 500. You know, obviously it's another stock price that you have to make sure is in your process to update. Yep. Um, so when, what yeah. did you do and when did you do it? Yeah, it was just very simple. I think it was April 4th. I did it. I think it was, uh, 
we tweeted about it. I said, one night I'm going to do it. The next day we did it. We, I had it set right at the beginning when the market opened, sold 40 shares of ITOT at 9070. The market value at the time of the sale was $3,628 and some change. It had a yield of 1.58%. So our dividend income for the moment, or brief moment, dropped $57.32. And immediately after, once the fund settled, we moved that right into SCHD. And I added about 30 extra, 40 extra dollars, however much to get it to a nice round number. We bought 50 shares of SCHD at 73.41, putting in $3,670 there. So just wow. a few extra dollars were added, but I had to get to the round 50 shares. Once I saw that it was 49 shares, I'm like, I'm putting in some extra cash to make sure I get it up to 50. Wow. So you got there. Now, how much income did you lose again right away when you sold? So we lost $57 with ITOT and their yield was 1.58%. SCHD yield, reported yield is 3.61%. So we picked up 2.03% on the yield. The new SCHD shares are producing $132.51 of annual dividend income. So that's a net positive of $75.18 right there. Wow. Wow. So you had an increase of well over, you know, pretty much you can argue it's almost 150% jump. Yeah, right there doing that move. So now we own 54 shares of FCHD and we're going to keep building that position. We're going to keep growing, um, just keep growing it. I love this. I love the ETF. I'm happy that we're building that position in it. And this allowed me to clean up my portfolio a little bit. To your point, Lanny, it's one less ticker, one less fund to monitor. Move it into one that I'm passionate about right now and grow it. Man, this is in the taxable account too. Yeah, there is going to be a slight capital gain on there. I'm estimating it's about a, a long-term capital gain of about $700. I think we had some losses from previous years that we have to offset that a little bit. But also, this opens up other strategies. Maybe this is a good time to take a little money off the table on Intel and move that into SCHD too, offset the capital gains and just keep building that and picking up some more yield from that transaction. Guys, there could be another video yeah. here. You don't know. Or yeah, could be selling some Intel stock. Maybe. I mean, that's part of it. Who knows? I mean, sky's the limit, right? <laughs> sky is the limit. Your yeah. stock portfolio is the sky. Yeah. At the limit. So obviously, everyone, this is just a quick recap uh, of this. This is a quick transaction, quick discussion of what happened. We sold an uh, S&P 500 fund, moved it into a much higher yielding SCHD picked up $75 of annual dividend income as a result of it, but are still investing in high a fund that invests in high quality dividend growth stocks. Let me know what you think of this move. Um, would you have done the same thing or would you have reversed course and gone in a completely different direction? And if you were me too, would you take some money off the table at a loss for Intel and move that into SCHD? I'd love to get everybody's thoughts on that. I haven't made up the decision. It was just something that just popped into my mind as we were recording this. Yeah, let us know in the comments, guys. If you haven't already subscribed to the channel, definitely give this video a thumbs up. Let us know if you guys have been also cleaning up any stock positions, whether you're down or you're up. You know, let us know kind of what your mindset has been on your dividend stock and overall stock portfolios. Um, we can't wait to see the feedback on this one and let us know, yeah, what you would do in Bert's position here. Yeah. If you haven't already, subscribe to the channel. Give us a thumbs up. And just remember, if you're not with us, you're against us, everybody. That was Bert the Hurt and Lanny from the Dividend Diplomats over and out.